His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from the Minister of Labour, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan, in which he expressed thanks, appreciation and gratitude to His Majesty the King in his name and on behalf of all workers in the Kingdom on the occasion of Labour Day, which falls on the 1st of May every year. In the cable, the Minister of Labour hailed His Majesty's support and follow-up on workers and his keenness on celebrating labour and production values and on honouring distinguished workers in all fields of production. The Minister affirmed His Majesty's constant support for workers' rights, enhancing their labour gains, creating promising and quality job opportunities for them and accelerating the pace of employment of national competencies in private sector establishments. He commended His Majesty's pardon of a number of convicts on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne, which stems from His Majesty's keenness on supporting the people of Bahrain and providing a decent life for them to begin a new life and integrate into society with a positive spirit. Minister Humidan also praised the follow-up and directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa in providing job opportunities and appropriate training for the people of Bahrain, as well as all their needs. He pledged His Majesty to move forward as production parties towards further cooperation and solidarity to support the stability and growth of the labour market in the Kingdom, maintain the provision of decent job opportunities for citizens and create a work environment that encourages excellence to contribute to Bahrain's development. The Minister of Labour wished His Majesty the King abundant health and happiness to continue leading the comprehensive development process and make further national achievements during his leadership. In the presence of the First Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and the President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, a BOC, his Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa and BOC and GFH Financial Group signed a sponsorship contract for the GFH High Diving World Cup qualifying tournament for the 2025 World Aquatics Championships, which will be held in the group's Harbour North project in Bahrain on the 21st and 22nd of September under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The agreement was signed by BOC Secretary General Faraz Al Kohiji and GFH Chief Operating Officer Salah Sharif. Under the agreement, GFH will provide the location and facilities required to hold the championships, which will highlight Bahrain's potential in hosting the most prestigious international championships in water sports. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed appreciation to GFH for supporting the global event, which will be held in Bahrain for the first time. He commended GFH for supporting the championships and events held in Bahrain, which embodies the active partnership between private sector companies and institutions and BOC. His Highness expressed pleasure in hosting the championship. GFH CEO Hisham al affirmed that GFH's sponsorship of this global event stems from its keenness to support and develop the sports sector. The CEO of World Aquatics, Brenton Nowicki, Look forward to taking the High Diving World Cup to new heights of growth from the Kingdom. The Representatives Council held its weekly session, presided over by its Speaker Ahmed al Musalam. The Council discussed and approved a draft law regarding medals and a draft law amending some provisions of the Correction and Rehabilitation Institution Law. The session also reviewed the annual reports of the National Audit Office the year 2021 to 2022 and the year 2022 to 2023 and decided to approve the recommendations of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Ziani, held a meeting with the Arab League Secretary General, Ahmed Abdel Gaith. They discussed the ongoing preparations for the 33rd Arab Summit hosted by Bahrain on May the 16th, the summit's work programme and the topics and issues scheduled to be included on the agenda of the Arab leaders' meeting. They also exchanged views on the current regional situation and Arab and international efforts aimed at stopping the escalation in the Gaza Strip, ending the war and providing humanitarian aid to the civilian population in Gaza. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs also held a meeting with the Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Palestine, Dr Mohammed Mustafa. They discussed the strong historical fraternal relations between the two countries and ways to develop cooperation in various fields to serve common interests and goals. They exchanged views on the current regional situation, the war on Gaza and the Arab and international efforts aimed at an immediate ceasefire, protecting civilians and facilitating the delivery of humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza. They discussed the ongoing preparations for the 33rd Arab Summit hosted by Bahrain next month. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also held a meeting with Sudan's Foreign Minister Hussein Awad. They discussed the strong historical fraternal relations between the two countries and ways to develop cooperation to serve common interests, in addition to the security and humanitarian situation in Sudan. They also discussed regional developments and efforts aimed at bringing peace, security and stability to the region, as well as ongoing preparations for the 33rd Arab Summit hosted by Bahrain next month. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also held a meeting with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Cooperation and Mauritanians Abroad of Mauritania, Mohamed Salem Wild Mazouk. They discussed the strong historical fraternal relations between the two countries and ways to develop cooperation. They also discussed regional developments and efforts aimed at achieving a ceasefire in Gaza, protect civilians and deliver humanitarian aid to the civilian population. They reviewed the ongoing preparations for the 33rd Arab Summit hosted by Bahrain next month. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also held a meeting with the Somali Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ahmed Muslim Fiki. They discussed the strong historical fraternal relations between the two countries and ways to develop cooperation in addition to regional developments and efforts aimed at achieving a ceasefire in Gaza. They reviewed the ongoing preparations for the 33rd Arab Summit, hosted by Bahrain next month. The Minister of Labour, Jamil Humidan, affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, and with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, attaches considerable importance to preserving workers' rights and enhancing the work environment in various productive sectors. He stated that the Kingdom's marking of International Labour Day and making it an official holiday reflects its appreciation for the role of the workforce in Bahrain's development, noting the achievements that the Kingdom has made in terms of consolidating labour values and enhancing social protection for workers, which placed it among the ranks of developed countries in protecting the rights and dignity of workers. Humidan added that International Labour Day is an opportunity to learn about the initiatives implemented by the government in order to provide further qualitative opportunities for citizens and accelerate the employment of job seekers in various private sector establishments. The Minister of Labour affirmed Bahrain's keenness to develop the experience of union work and enhance social dialogue between production parties. On the 1st of May every year, the Kingdom of Bahrain adjoins the world in marking International Labour Day in the private and public sectors, which reflects the importance of Bahraini workers in the process of construction and sustainable development. The Kingdom of Bahrain has made considerable efforts in the field of protecting the rights of Bahraini workers through comprehensive visions and strategies and various programmes to improve the quality of the work environment and make it more encouraging by launching further training programmes aimed at developing the competitiveness of Bahraini workers in various sectors. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Aramehi, launched the Waterfront Deforestation Plan in East Hid in the presence of the Minister of Municipality Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wael al Mubarak, the Secretary General of the National Initiative for Agricultural Development, the NIAD, Sheikh Maram bin Isa Al Khalifa, and a number of senior officials at the Ministry. Arumehi affirmed the Ministry's keenness to participate with NIAD in the National Afforestation Campaign, Forever Green, and to support the implementation of the strategic objectives of the initiative by increasing green areas in residential towns, in partnership with the private sector, which is in line with the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. 
The minister expressed appreciation for the efforts of those responsible for implementing the campaign which aims to develop the agricultural sector in the kingdom in line with the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to increase afforestation projects in various government projects. For her part, Sheikha Maram stressed the National Initiative's keenness to support the national afforestation strategy to achieve sustainable development in Bahrain. The Meteorological Directorate of the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications warned of thunderstorms in the Kingdom, extending into the early hours of Thursday morning, at intermittent intervals and varying intensity. The rains are accompanied by very fast gusts. The Directorate reported that the winds will be northwesterly in general, ranging from 10 to 22 knots, with gusts that may reach 50 knots, then turning to the easterly later in the day. The National Emergency Management Centre continues its efforts to follow up on the latest developments in weather fluctuations taking place in the Kingdom. The centre includes a number of government agencies, most notably the departments of the Ministry of Interior, where the process of continuous monitoring and follow-up of the weather situation is carried out, in addition to receiving reports from citizens and residents about rainwater pooling and the flow of traffic in all governorates. On the other hand, the General Directorate of Traffic is making continuous and intensive efforts to maintain the traffic flow in light of the weather fluctuations in the Kingdom since the early morning hours, which will continue until Thursday morning, according to the reports of the Meteorological Directorate at the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications. As part of the efforts of the Ministry of Works, the Assistant Undersecretary for Roads, Engineer Ahmed al Tajir, visited a number of main streets, including Sheikh Jab al Suba Street, Al Qud Street, and Wali Ahad Street Avenue, in order to inspect the efforts to address rainwater pooling to maintain the flow of traffic and ensure the safety of main streets and tunnels in various governorates of the kingdom. Relevant authorities continue their efforts as the rain emergency team continues to drain rainwater pools. The Ministry of Works notes the importance of keeping the covers of sewage inspection rooms closed during rainfall in order to avoid the backflow of sewage water. It also stressed that waste must not be thrown into the rainwater network to avoid blockage. The rain emergency teams began pumping out rainwater pools since the first hours of the rain and will continue for 24 hours in various regions and governorates of the Kingdom. Emergency teams were on duty before rainfall yesterday evening and pumping efforts began as soon as rainfall started in order to maintain the safety of all members of society. Rain emergency teams were distributed among the four governorates according to a plan.